So sometimes I wonder if when we read Holy Scripture, how we interpret what it is we read. Sometimes I wonder if we read Holy Scripture and we believe that it's some kind of historical recording of events that happened, or we know that there are places in Holy Scripture that are kind of like fantasy tales or parables, things that have a deeper meaning. And today, I just wonder if the words that we hear from Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke just aren't little practical advice in ways that Jesus desires his disciples to live. Sometimes over the course of the church here, we kind of get lost in the gospel lesson. So I share with you that this gospel reading that we had today comes on the heels of Jesus picking his 12 disciples. And if we think back to that story, there were probably about 200 disciples that climbed to the top of a mountain and spent the night with Jesus on this mountain and as morning broke, Jesus calls the disciples together and chooses the twelve that will become Jesus' inner circle. And as they walk off of this mountain onto a plain, they're greeted by throngs of people, crowds of people longing to hear Jesus' words, longing to be touched by Jesus' healing hands. And all of a sudden, Jesus goes into this, what we call the Sermon on the Plain. In other words, Jesus is sharing with his disciples exactly how it is he expects the disciples to form this new community led by Jesus. I don't think Jesus' words are some kind of rule book where the disciples are going to be punished if they fail to meet exactly what Jesus says. And I don't think that this is pie-in-the-sky thinking for Jesus. Rather, I think that Jesus' words for this newly formed community are simply advice and guidance for how the community should live. If we take our Lord's words seriously, then what we should understand is that this concept that Jesus promotes of loving one another is not some hallmark moment or this intimate expression of affection for one another, but rather this love that Jesus talks about is that we would always seek the good of the other. To seek not only the good of the other that sits around our dinner table at Thanksgiving, not only to seek the good of the other that sits next to me in worship, but to seek the good of the other who will stand opposed against me with every breath of their life. Jesus calls us to seek even their good. I sometimes think that as Americans living in the year of our Lord 2019, that we tend to idealize these disciples. We tend to think that it would have been easy to be a disciple of Jesus Christ back then because they didn't have YouTube or the NFL. They didn't have social media. All they had was this language and talk amongst themselves. But trust me when I tell you, these disciples led difficult lives. And they led lives that had as many challenges and obstacles and strifes and struggles as you and I experience in our daily living. Without a doubt, there was a disciple up on that hill that night that had an argument with his wife on whether or not he should follow this itinerant preacher, Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, there was a disciple up on that hill that night that had people whom he loved and valued that were sick and ready to die. Without a doubt, there were disciples there that were rich, and there were disciples present that were incredibly poor and wondered how their family would be fed if they just left everything behind and followed this man, Jesus. And Jesus shares with these disciples, this is how we're going to live. We are going to love one another, and we are going to love the world around us. World's common good. In other words, if I desire forgiveness, then I must share forgiveness. If I desire to continue to receive these abundant blessings from
from our Lord, then I must share my abundant blessings in the very world in which we live. In 2019, we probably look at that and say, it's impossible to live like that. If I live like that, people will take advantage of me and abuse me. If I live like that, I will never uh, try to, I will never be able to achieve the things that I hoped for and prayed for. But our Lord and Savior tells us that the reward for living this kind of lifestyle is the lifestyle itself. That it's a lifestyle that brings about peace, that brings God's rule and God's reign into the very world in which we live. You and I experience, almost on a weekly basis, young children who come forward to hear how it is we are called to live as people of faith. And when they're this age, we just hope the world for them, right? We tell them things like they can be anything they'd like to be, they can do anything they would like to do, but in the darker recesses of our hearts, we know that there will be places and times that they get hurt, and there will be obstacles placed in their way that keep them from achieving those dreams. My question to you and I is why do we allow those obstacles and those struggles to exist to begin with? Why are we, like Paul in his letter to the church in Thessalonica, willing to say to the community of faith, you're already doing a great job being the children of God that God created you to be. Now, do it even better. Tomorrow will be a better version of this community of Christ in the world. Tomorrow, encourage one another even more often. Support one another even more often. Share what you have even more often. For together, we will experience the reign and the kingdom of God within our lives and within our community. Today, I stand before you as just simply a humble servant of the Lord. And I ask you this one question. If we truly desire to live in a world that exposes and expounds the love and the guidance, the forgiveness, the grace, and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, a life that we know will happen and the life that is to come, then why aren't we doing it in our daily living? Why aren't we doing it even more than tearing down those walls and obstacles that keep our children from being all that they can be? Experiencing the love of God in every moment of their lives, to experience the joy of being in Christ's presence. The choice is yours and mine to make. How we hear the teachings of Jesus and apply them to our daily living. How we allow Jesus' teachings to move across our community of faith and dictate the policies and procedures and the ways that we treat engage the world around us. But I share this with you as I leave. There is no question in how 